hi guys welcome back to my channel so today i thought i would do a video that i've been meaning to do for a really really long time and i wanted to talk to you about my thyroid journey now i know a lot of people who have subscribed to my channel might be here because of my gluten-free recipes and talking about celiac disease but I actually have another autoimmune disease and it's called Graves disease and I wanted to talk a little bit about that today all about my thyroid journey because at the moment I am isolating at home because I've just had radioactive iodine therapy for my thyroid and I thought it would be a really cool idea to talk to you guys about what that is, what it means, what's wrong with my thyroid and the previous treatment I've had including surgery. Before I start, you may have been sent the link to this video because you've made a comment on one of my other videos about the lump on my neck. Now, I don't mean to send you this video nastily, but I think, for me, one of the things I'm really self-conscious of is the fact that I have these cysts on my what's left of my thyroid. I just think when I'm putting videos out about recipes and trying to help people who are gluten-free with how to make things that they really miss, the last thing I need on that is comments about my appearance and I know that a lot of the comments are made with the best intentions and that people are doing it because they've seen stories in the media before about people who've had certain lumps and things and their followers have pointed them out and they've got them checked out and it's turned out to be something like cancer but for me I already know what these are, I have had them checked out and when I'm putting recipe videos out it just it doesn't help with the fact that I'm actually really self-conscious of them anyway. So if you are one of those people who's commented and I've sent you this link, please know that I'm sending this because I really just want you to understand the story behind my thyroid and know that everything's all right. But please also maybe take a moment to think before you comment on people's videos about how they look because when people are trying to help, they're not really inviting your opinion on how they look. <sighs> it's been difficult knowing whether to say that or not in this video but it's something I'm really self-conscious of and I all I see when I look back on videos with me in is the lumps on my neck so just to know that I can explain to you guys about them is quite nice so let's start the story let's rewind back to when I was like about 12 years old I got diagnosed with celiac disease I was really short I was really skinny and after I've been diagnosed, and I will pop a link to my CNET diagnosis video below if you'd like to watch that and you haven't yet, I was still having issues, I still wasn't really putting on weight, I was very hyperactive as a child, um, constantly eating, constantly running around crazy, you know, talking really fast, and eventually I got diagnosed with an overactive thyroid. Now I have a history of thyroid problems in my family and this is something that can be hereditary so it wasn't really a surprise and it's probably why it was picked up quite soon after my celiac diagnosis. I think when we went through my medical notes the other day with the doctor I was diagnosed when I was 14 with Graves disease although no one actually told me until maybe a year or so ago that it was Graves disease. I was just told I had no reactive thyroid and Graves' disease is basically an autoimmune disorder. So I don't know a lot of the science, but as a brief overview, your thyroid is a gland in your neck about here, and it's like a butterfly shape, and it basically works on your metabolism. So if your thyroid is overactive, it's basically like everything is running really fast. So you feel hot all the time, you feel stressed all the time, you get Graves' rage, they call it, where you just feel like you're gonna kind of like explode for no reason you can get anxiety you can get hungry all the time but you struggle to put on weight you're feeling hot all the time you talk really fast which is one of my key signs that my thyroid's going overactive is that I start talking at like a million miles an hour basically mine was diagnosed as Graves disease which is an autoimmune condition which means as well as just going overactive it's basically my body attacking itself a bit like celiac if you're familiar with that so my body is producing too much thyroid stimulating hormone. So it's basically telling my thyroid it needs to keep working and produce more thyroid hormone when actually it doesn't need to. But the thyroid's like, okay, let's do this. So it goes overactive, it gets crazy. I've got too much thyroid hormone. Poof, cue me feeling like I'm going to explode. So that's a, kind of a summary of what Graves' disease is. Now, after I was diagnosed, I got put on carbimazole, which is a thyroid kind of suppressant. 
Um, it's a medication that you can go on long term, but and a lot of people successfully do go on it long term, but there are certain things you can't do, like you can't start a family when you're on it, um, and you can get some side effects, though I don't think I really got any. For me, that was never going to be a long term fix, and eventually I got to a point where my thyroid kept going into remission, so they put me on the carbimazole, they'd then try and block out my thyroid completely they do something called block and replace so they block my thyroid completely and then they'd introduce via medication a very small amount of thyroid hormone to try and keep me at a normal level and then eventually I was weaned off that but then my thyroid kept going yay freedom and going overactive again so we tried this a lot over the years and to be honest I just got fed up of it and I remember not feeling great at uni I was feeling quite mentally not great um didn't really know why and I remember having some blood tests for something when I went back home and getting a call and being told your thyroid's gone really overactive again and I just remember thinking I can't keep doing this like I can't keep having these phone calls coming off the medication going back on the medication it was just stressing me out and I basically got to a point where I was like I need this out of my body so I looked at the options of radioactive iodine and thyroid surgery and I was conscious that I had a bit of a goiter. I know that compared to other people perhaps it wasn't massive but for me I hated it and I wanted rid of it and I just thought surgery was the best answer. Oh, I can hear children playing outside, they're so loud. So in December 2010 I had my what was supposed to be a full thyroidectomy. Now if you're squeamish look away for a few seconds but I'll show you a picture here of what my scar looked like just after the surgery. It was stapled, I had a drain in. The drain wasn't very nice, but overall, I mean, the surgery wasn't the worst thing I've ever done in the world, but it, it wasn't particularly pleasant, but it wasn't awful. And I basically was told when I came around that they hadn't been able to remove all of the thyroid. Now this can be quite common. So they hadn't been able to locate a nerve to my voice box. And instead of risking causing any damage, they decided to just leave that part of my thyroid in. So in my head I thought, great, I've got a little bit of thyroid left, maybe this will act like a normal thyroid. Turns out I was kind of wrong. Once my thyroid scar had healed and I kind of had recovered, I was on thyroid replacement hormone, but then I started to wean off that because my levels were getting higher and eventually I came off the thyroid replacement hormone and for a little while my thyroid was stable it was kind of producing a normal amount of thyroxine or whatever hormone it is that it produces but then it started to go overactive again and I just remember thinking for goodness sake like I thought I had the surgery to stop this I thought it would be a quick fix I perhaps rushed into it without thinking about you know the fact that they might not be able to take it all out and once again, I was put back on carbimazole. I've probably been on carbimazole now for a couple of years. I went on and off it again, going overactive, coming off it, being okay for a while, going overactive, and it just, oh. I just got to a point where I was like, I'm here again, and I'm doing the same thing, and this isn't what was supposed to happen. There's just been a lot of thoughts going around my head, and I just thought I need a more permanent fix for this, and I started looking at radioactive iodine, I spoke to an endocrinologist about it, I got referred to a surgeon for a second opinion on getting a second surgery and she was brilliant, she was so honest with me and she said it would be really complicated to go back in, it could be done but they'd need like special nerve finding tools and they'd need like a second surgeon there to make sure it was all done properly because the risk is so much more with a second surgery because she was explaining that the scar tissue inside looks just like the nerves that they have to try and locate so they're both like basically look like white lines so they have to try and work out what's a nerve what's scarring and it just for me the idea of that sort of whole recovery from that again I just thought I don't know if I can do this but at the same time I had had an ultrasound done on these lumps because I'd noticed they got a lot bigger and it turns out these are cysts so this is a thyroglossal cyst I don't know if I pronounced that right and I have some cysts on my thyroid and the surgeon was great and she said look I said to her if it was you what would you do because 
I know doctors can't really tell you what to do, but at the same time, they're the experts, not me. And she said she would recommend having the iodine treatment and then after that looking at whether then they could remove the cysts. So I took this information away. I did a lot of reading, thinking about it. I spoke to the endocrinologist again and at the start of lockdown, I was also diagnosed with thyroid eye disease, which is something that unfortunately with Graves you can get where your eyes, basically the nerve behind your eyes is like squeezed and it can make your eyes protrude. You can get vision problems. I actually didn't get any of those, but it was picked up by a consultant before it got that bad, I guess. I'm still on medication for that now, and I just decided the iodine was the right way to go. At the start of lockdown, I spoke to the endocrinologist, got on the waiting list, and finally, now, two years later, I have just had the radioactive iodine. Now, to be honest, it was probably the easiest hospital appointment I've ever had. In fact, the hour and a half drive to the hospital was probably worse than the appointment itself. So I basically turned up, I had a really good chat with the endocrinologist who had only met over the phone before. He filled me in on all the risks and everything which I'd already gone over on the phone with him and several other people about and I had to like sign a disclaimer saying that I wasn't pregnant and that I wouldn't get pregnant in six months because that's the big thing you can't do with this radioactive iodine treatment. Um, and then I had to take a pregnancy test, which was like panic, but it was fine, it was negative. And then I went in and there was this really nice guy who did it, he went through everything with me. And you basically have to put this pill, it's in like this metal cage almost, because obviously it's radioactive. And he had to like put it in a glass tube and then I had to take it through the glass tube, like tip it into my mouth. I mean it was tiny, it was like smaller than a paracetamol and then swallow it with water and then I couldn't eat for like two hours. I really hoped I'd like glow in the dark or get some sort of super strength, but no, I feel exactly the same. Basically it will take maybe like six weeks or more for it to start slowly killing off some of the thyroid cells. I don't know if killing off is the correct term, but that's what it's doing in my head. And hopefully reduce my thyroid so that it either doesn't produce any hormone and I go on hormone replacement, which is a much nicer treatment, or it just produces enough for me to be normal, I guess. So I'm in this weird stage at the moment because I'm technically radioactive and I have to avoid exposing anyone else to that, so I'm currently sleeping in the spare room. Um, I have to distance from people from like a couple of weeks, so I can't sleep in the same bed as Steve, I can't hug Steve, it's very upsetting because so I have to sit on the other side of the lounge every night and then like say goodbye to him at night, it's just horrible and if anything that's the hardest part of this and I hadn't really thought about how hard that would be like mentally. Come home from the hostel and all I wanted to do was just have a hug and be like oh my gosh it's finally done but no, I had to go and sit in here on a blow up bed by myself. <laughs> So I realise that has been a bit of a whistle stop tour of my last 10 years or so, no, 20 years or so. Yeah, it's been a massive part of my life and I know a lot of people have similar experiences so I just wanted to kind of give a really brief overview of that. I wanted to explain a bit about what Graves is, why I've had this treatment, because obviously you're probably thinking why on earth are you radioactive? And just to know that if anyone else is going through this, I have also written a bit of like a big write-up on all my previous experience because I've covered it quite quickly here. Um, I'll link that down below in the description as well as some links to like the British Thyroid Association who are great and have loads of brilliant information. But yeah, I just wanted to put out a video because I thought it was important to talk about and also I wanted to share that message about not commenting on people's appearance and you know, it's great that things can be picked up via social media and stuff like that, but I also, this is something that I've lived with for 20 years, and I thought having this information out there would just be really helpful and hopefully reassure anyone who is worried about the lumps on my neck. And hopefully at some point once the treatment works, hopefully, I can look at getting these removed. But obviously I'll keep you updated on that. And I've got my follow up appointment in June, so I will definitely let you guys know how I get on with that. If you have any questions, please drop a message in the comments below. Obviously I'm not a medical professional. I can only comment on my own experience, but if I can help, I'll do my best. 
and yeah I look forward to seeing you guys again soon please hit subscribe if you like this video make sure you check out all my recipe videos and vlogs and everything and I'll see you guys again soon bye